Yeah, take it. Oh what no, happened? the music! What the hell happened? I don't know. Apparently, uh, nobody likes Kelly Clarkson. Check, check, check. One, two, three. What happened to the Kells? Well, what doesn't kill us uh -oh. makes us stronger. Um, uh oh. Cool. Uh, all right. So I think my levels are still good from here, right? Well, talk, you can talk, see talk. Him. Yeah. Is that okay? Should I get closer? This is me. So if I'm talking like this, then you talk. And I'm talking like this. Talk, 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 and you talk. Then you should get a little bit closer. Ooh, how about this? Is this okay? Is this like a good, good volume? Yeah. Talk, so, I mean, talking this is and stuff. Back and forth, back and forth. Forth and back, back and forth. Yeah. We're, okay. Yeah. Well, hot skippity. No. So yeah, that that's actually that was a little much. Yeah, that's that's so like too much, too much. Well, hi. Oi. Oi there. Hello. Oi. Uh, all right. You ready to roll? Uh, let's rock the socks oars. All right. Here we go. Wait, hold on. That's way not as loud. Take two. Here we go. <laughs> And welcome back to the Jury Moore podcast, the podcast where uh, we're even married. Goddamn right we are. If anybody tells, tells you different, I'm going to sock him right in the nose. That would be weird. Uh, nose Why? socking? Why are you so violent? You've been gone. Like, Since so you've been gone. We're on a Kelly Clarkson a click. Asshole. Because we were listening to Kelly Clarkson before. And uh, now we we listen, we stop listening, we listen again, like in Mad Max. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I have. I've been movie. on the road. We didn't do this show on Monday. We did. We were doing the show on Thursday because I had a little sojourn to uh, Charlotte, woo, North Carolina. Do you have like a second home in Charlotte, or do you have like a side girl in Charlotte that I don't know about? Because you're in Charlotte a lot. I mean, for random cities, yeah, uh, I, I do. I have two. I have uh, or three, really. Unless uh, it's Eden, North Carolina. <laughs> no, I. Oh Jesus, yeah, I forgot. No, I have it in North Carolina a lot. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know if I get the Southern games uh, in 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 you know with the Go game. Like I don't know if that's like a thing. Like people just. You know, think that Florida is the South, and they're like, "Well, he's used to it." You're like, a "It's part of his people." <laughs> You're a barely Southern boy. I know. Like, I mean, really, the only, the only Southern element about me is that Davie, Florida, where I am from, was the last city in South Florida to have a Klan meeting, and uh, was it also the first? No. I mean, really, just money in Florida equaled Klan people. Like, yeah. when white people got together, and then, like, all of a sudden, it wasn't so favorable to white people. They they got together. This is a really weird topic to get on yeah. for a wedding and relationship podcast. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I've been gone. I'm back now. We're doing the show, and uh, it's going to be a fun one. I, I will ask everybody to bear with me because uh, I, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, and... We're kind of rolling in to the twilight hours on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might ter actually turn into a pumpkin mid podcast. Well, I, I mean, or a dickhead. I think I already turned into a dickhead during the pre-show. So uh, maybe maybe I'll just remain a dickhead permanently if, uh, if if we keep going. Well, at least I know what I'm getting myself into. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get ourselves into the update. <laughs> Update. update there's actually not a lot of updates um no so for actual wedding planning i probably should have probably should have said this right up top uh i basically caught the plague 
Yeah. Um, so that kind of put me out for getting shit done. Um, you got shit done. <laughs> you got a lot of shit I got done. a lot of shit done. Not a lot of wedding planning. Not a lot. A lot of shit. A lot of shit. A lot of, oh, God. It's <laughs> oh. a lot of shit. Oh. No, um, so yeah, you were you were at a commission, and then I was out of town, so there's not a whole lot. Um, there, that we've updated, but... There are a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just got a notice on Etsy the other day, one of the many Etsy things we've ordered for this wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, the slave collars for the bridesmaids. Yeah. Um, so she's about Game to wrap, Thrones. wrap those up and yeah. uh, and ship them. Nice. So that's good. Good. Um, also, I started looking because I'm going to be holding a dragon egg, as mm-hmm. are all of my bridesmaids, like looking for flowers. And I was going to mention this to you on the podcast, and I'm curious what other people think, too, if you want to email in about it. But I thought, got to stay in theme, right? Mm-hmm. Because Game of Thrones, Daenerys, when does Daenerys have flowers? Like never, except for when Dario, is that his name? Uh, Dario Naharis. Yeah. He gives her three flowers. And oh, I yeah, found yeah, yeah. fake ones of those. So it's like a blue rose, something that looks like baby's breath, and this really weird spiky looking flower, which I would have got a real flower bouquet, but they're like, I don't know that it's a hundred bucks a stem, but you can't like buy the flowers for under $130. Gotcha. So I was thinking I could make a bouquet out of those flowers. I don't know. Well, that's pretty cool. So would it be like... Where would it be? Would you have the dragon egg and the flowers? The fl- or would like you have the, the flowers the, and the and the bridesmaids would have the dragon egg? The, I would have both. So the bridesmaids are all going to be holding dragon's egg. You're going to be holding it like a football, the dragon egg? Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to walk up. You know, just secure just it. Real Three tight. points of pressure, you know? <laughs> Always hold on to the rock. Yeah. Um, but no, like, they'll kind of like rest on top of the flowers. I'm not sure how much of a bouquet it will really be, but it'll really be just, you know, something in addition to the dragon egg that sets it apart. Gotcha. So I think, uh, I think I'm going to do that. The other thing is, um, and I didn't mention this last podcast. I don't know if we had, I think we had one between now and then. Um, I did talk through Our last one was Portland. Before Portland? Our last podcast was Portland. Oh, I don't. I didn't bring it up on the podcast then. So, on my way to Portland, I was spending some time in the club uh, with my uh, late flight. Uh, with a uh, uh, mm. uh, 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 uh. and uh, texting yeah. with um our priest to be. I don't know what to call him, Andrew Maine. He's our efficient. Who's going to be our efficient? Mm-hmm. And I was texting him. In he is efficient. He very well may or may not be. I haven't worked with him, so. Yeah. No, he is. He's, you know, no nonsense. Efficient. Um, so I was texting him. I don't even remember. I could probably find it on my phone, but I'm not going to pull it up right now. Yeah. I was texting back and forth with him, asking him kind of like, hey, do you have any plans for like, or any ideas for what you're going to wear for the wedding? And he was just kind of like, what? And so I was texting back and forth. He's like, oh, yeah, I joked around about that with Justin like ages ago. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be the efficient. Well, no, I actually, I asked him to do it, and he said, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I guess, no, he did. He suggested he would do it. Yeah, because there was somebody that, I forget who, like, there was somebody else that we might have had in mind before that. No, I mean, like, because I talked to him along with Brian and Andrew, or sorry, uh, um, Anthony, my friend from back home, and my brother about what we would do uh or no basically i was just like hey listen uh i got a ring and i'm gonna ask ashley to marry me so uh you guys would be my best men if there's any reason why i should not be doing this that you guys have been holding back like please let me know right now and they were all like hey okay no we we, we, we married and then andrew was like hey I'll, i'll be i'll officiate the wedding and i took that to mean because andrew is a showman. You yeah. Know, he's, he's, a, he's a very creative guy. He's a very fun guy. He's a very smart guy. So I took that to mean he wanted to be a part of the wedding on a deeper level than just the best man. Perhaps he forgot all about that up until this text message conversation because yeah. he seemed kind of surprised almost. And I'm yeah, like, oh, well. That, that, that uh, doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. But things are moving slowly, especially now that my health is kind of back up and i'm popping pills every day yeah so um other than that we did receive 
One new wedding thing. I think we talked about the Peron already on the last one. The Maybe Peron. the Peron. Peron. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to fuck this up by Matt. If we hadn't, Matt yeah. got us a Peron. We did. Um, and then and we drank it. Here's the problem with the Peron, man. <laughs> like, here's the you need to be drinking we were that drunk. You need already, to be drinking that fair. Peron um, at the beginning of the night. Good night starter. Uh, problem as a night ender. Because yeah. uh, if you're already drunk and then you're like, oh, it's because it really is. It's fun to do. Uh, it's just it's a lot of a lot of booze. We definitely took down like three quarters of a bottle of wine and like we did finish that wine. Yeah. And in, in, in a startlingly short amount of time, it was like 30 minutes. It was inappropriate. It was horrible. guys. Inappropriate. In a probe. And then uh, Matthew, mm-hmm. um, I don't know that I should be saying last names, but Matthew, uh, Canada in Afghanistan, got us like this vacuum sealer thing. Yeah. So like basically kind of like Ziploc bags that you put your food in and it vacuum seals it. Um, uh, which so is something because cool. that you have a whole lot of like cooking stuff on there. Yes, because what else are we going to put on there? <laughs> we have... Uh, we have like the most well stocked tiny kitchen. Oh my god, guys! In the world, it is fabulous. I feel like per square inch, we have the best kitchen on earth. Should we open a restaurant? And we should. what should we serve? We should just serve it out into our little canyon of fuck squeaks here. Oh my god, we could like literally hand stuff to the neighbors. Like no, we just throw it on like army man parachutes though. <laughs> to deliver to all the floors below. By the way, this is the weirdest thing with uh, like wedding stuff. Is like, you can't just run around and tell people like, oh, we need people for the wedding. I need you to sweep the floor and have them be like, oh, my God, I'd love to. Oh, I, I, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, I'll go out of my way. I'll get a good broom and I'll mm-hmm. sweep the floor. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, can't, be like, too. can't be like, oh, can you sew all the clothes? Like, no. Yeah, like, oh, my God, I'd love to. Mm-hmm. I'll get gilded thread and I'll sew the clothes. But <laughs> if you mention child slaves, if you mention wedding officiating. People fucking crawl out of the woodwork, like like this uh, the chat room right here, like with Zombie Jesus is like oh I can officiate the wedding. Jackie Hearn's like Tom Merrick can officiate the wedding because Tom has officiated the wedding, and everybody would do a great job. It's just it's the oddest thing. Everybody wants to officiate weddings. Be like yeah I. What uh, do you think that is? We are so cool. They I don't think it's an us thing. No no I, I think cool. this happens all no. the time. No I I really have no idea. I, I really have no. Is clue. it because it's like it's kind of an honor, right? But also like you get to be at the center of a moment that like is really big in people's lives. Like I guess it is a really cool. Like I wouldn't want to do it because I feel like I would fuck it up. Really? Yeah. All right, here we go. You go okay. ahead and officiate a wedding. Three, two, one, go. Hi. No, you're right. You would have <laughs> fucked it up. Uh, all right. Well, well, here we we don't have a whole lot of updates. Do you have anything else? No, not really. Uh, we still need to figure out like what to put on the cake, though. Um, Angela, yeah. who got us the bird plex, yes, is working on making us a jury more logo. Mm-hmm. So depending on how complicated the logo is, maybe we can put it on the cake. Big shout out to Ange. Yeah. Big shout out. Really excited. Really well, excited hopefully us. everybody still loves us once we get done with this topic. Yeah. I don't know if you knew this or not, but mm-hmm. like, I consider myself a good f- evil feminist, right? Like, you're a feminazi? I mean, for the good. Yes. So, so <laughs> I, uh, I, I kind of like to pride myself on that and that I'm really good about all kinds of gender issues, some of which are really unpopular, like, um, Sex workers, particularly. Sure. Uh, when you look at, like, strippers, very pro-stripping, mm-hmm. uh, very pro-people want to get naked in a magazine if, like, that's what they want to do of their own volition. Um, very pro-prostitution, mm-hmm. which is often very unpopular, and and very, like, pro-porn. And when people think about, like, feminism, yeah. uh, those ne- aren't necessarily the well, first things that come to... Well, certainly the, the sex-positive elements of feminism. Yeah. Right. I mean, there, there are, of course, one thing is not everything. And 
gender issues not only come up a lot in your uh, online work, but also, you know, the the new the rebranded church yeah. uh, that that you're doing with John Teasdale, uh, almost human. Uh, only human. Only human. Uh, only human deals a lot with gender issues, probably even more pointedly than the church uh, stream did before. I talk a lot about gender issues on on the jury uh, podcast, so it is uh, it, it is a fairly constant topic yeah. of conversation that I feel like we've got a really so good like, rapport on. Yeah, me too. Like I feel like I'm a real good good evil feminist, and yeah. so you're like Glenda the Good Witch. I am. Of mm-hmm. feminism. Uh, so I was super, super sick. Like I kind of came on Thursday, Friday, and then just took me out this weekend. Um, as we kind of talked about earlier. And Justin was out and about doing, I don't know, you somewhere. You're somewhere. You could have been in Eden or freaking Charlotte for all I know. Sure. You were in town somewhere. I was, yeah. Uh, doing a go game and I did not want to move. I was so bedridden and the stupid charger in the wall wasn't working and I wanted to look something up to entertain myself. Mm -hmm. So I see like your iPad over there and because I know all your passwords to everything. (laughs) Um, I logged in and because my phone was dead, I logged in and I go to pull up Safari and start typing in something, and then I see like this little tab, and it's very clearly a porn website. And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god! And I realized that the Safari thing was like incognito. Wait a minute! All right, wait. So you just saw a tab? Yeah. Oh wow, that's not what I thought you saw. That's, okay, that's fine. Okay, I'll, so I'll, remind me to get back to this. Well, so I saw the tab, and I'm like, yeah. oh my god, oh my god. Well. This is weird. This is like, I I don't want him to think like I was snooping because like I can't say that I didn't see the porn. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I don't know what to think. So I I go back to the other Safari tab and pretend that I Mm -hmm. didn't see the porn site. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should just like start closing stuff because I'm, Justin knows that when it comes to any device, like I am crazy about closing everything it's just like a compulsive thing i have to do you, are, I, you can't yeah. have 70 things you always have 70 things have up on your iphone things. ipad yeah. and never ever ever close it so i start closing stuff real fast because i'm like oh well you know at the least i can do is close it all and then he he won't know oops he won't know that uh that i ever saw it yeah and then i get to the email yeah and on the email screen uh, because you preview everything when you're uh-huh. like closing things out uh-huh. in the iOS system. I see the exact website that I was looking at yep. and like a membership confirmation. Yes. iPad drop. Wait, <laughs> like, you dropped the iPad? Well, no. I mean, okay. I was I was in bed. Oh, okay. Good. I was That's bedridden. Right. I you're allowed move. to drop the iPad. Because if I moved, I would have. I mean, just, this is like part of my job. Like myself. I really, I play this. They are, these are all like Go Game soundboards here. So I. I was weird about it and I closed it out and I didn't want to, I didn't want you to think like I was being snoopy on purpose, but then I'm like, yeah. well, I'm here already. 2% on this phone. Okay. So I go in my incognito window on my phone. I look at the porn site and went to go see like how expensive the prescription was. I'm like, oh, at least he's not spending like a lot of money. <laughs> and my so money, I, woman, I have spent it all one. I, I, I'm really embarrassed by this. Like, even before I approached you about any of this. Mm -hmm. Because I had seen... Well, like I said, I pride myself on being, like, crazy, good, bad feminist lady. And I'm constantly talking about, like, pro-sex work, pro-this, that, and the next thing. But this made me feel really awkward. Mm -hmm. And it almost made me feel like... And even though I, I know you watch porn... I talked about it extensively. I'm not surprised that you've paid for porn. Yeah, although very recently those developments. Yeah. Yeah. Only since I've like actually like made money in, in the world, which yeah. is in in the grand timeline of my life is is still a very recent development. Yeah. Uh, you know, Q says in the chat, come on, support professionals. See, I mean, the, I'm not surprised. You uh, pay I mean, for listen, it. I'm, like I'm, for, a I'm in the, the web entrepreneur business. Like I am, yeah. I, I support, 
web based businesses. But like because you and I have also also talked about how we've always been like really, really good communicators. And this is one thing that we've never talked about. So I always thought like you were hiding something from me. And I knew that yeah. that was like counterintuitive. And so I was freaking out in my head mm -hmm. so bad. And then I talked to you about it and you just kind of laughed at me. Well, I mean, hopefully I didn't laugh at you in a way that made you feel belittled or un uncomfortable. Uh, you know. All right. So there's a few things at work here. Uh, a, there's the element that you feel you violated an element of like violated a boundary by oh, like totally. maybe seeing something that you weren't supposed to see. Which, by the way, uh, every once in a while, even if I switch out of private mode on Safari and go back to the regular mode and then immediately shut it off, every once in a while, the last screen from the private mode which is always pornography, flashes when I open Safari again. Oh. Because it's like, oh, like this is the last We're thing just we going to remember the last screenshot. Now let's yeah. load the new screen, right? And it's always a flash, right? But it's happened one or two times, and it's one of those things that I live in terror because I'm afraid that I'm going to have to go on my iPad for something when a client's looking over my shoulder at the Go game. Because by the way, there's not a whole lot of jerking off to internet porn while I'm at home, mm -mm. right? It's a lot of just on the road. I mean, there's a lot of which is shocking for our in, celibate life in in hotel rooms. Yeah, yeah. No, normally otherwise we just play pinochle, which satisfies me sexually. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, like it's it's a lot of nights like last night. Like, and not to say that I jerked off to internet porn last night, but I mean, come on, connect the dots. Uh, you, you know, there's just it's just lonely and and you know i'm trying to get to sleep and there's just a lot of like that so like nope. that's normally the days that i am jerking off to internet porn are very often within 12 hours of when i'm dealing with clients just because that's why i'm out on the road so i was when you first told me about this i thought that's what happened oh you didn't realize like the browser was still up oh that... yeah no i thought that like you i know, had to you, totally you investigate saw, that site. you know like you know, two chicks scissoring and a dude jerking off like as like the last screen that I had seen. And you were just like, there's a furnace blast of pornography, <laughs> you know, like right all up in your oh, face. Oh, no, no. But I did have to investigate later to see like, OK, who are these fine ladies? Mm -hmm. I'm like, and I'm like, shit, they're all hotter than me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's Is he leaving me for like crazy porn lady so all right so let's, let's with a get much into, better looking labia let's get into this uh that i've never really understood like there's like this whole thing in porn where it's like like oh look at like, my labia like like oh what a pretty pussy or something like that and it's like i mean not to say that it's ugly right like or, do you, do, wait tell me this like in in lady porn mm -hmm. like have you ever seen the guy and i remember seeing this ages ago like the guys on youtube that are like bending their dick around their balls to make like and now it's a snail now it's a hamburger oh no no no! that's puppetry yeah. of the penis yeah yeah that's no they like they're not even really do they do porn. that with labias no. no okay i was just curious. oh i don't know i, mean, I don't like, watch porn tell me i see no no, no but this is that's not porn or that's give like me your, that's give me the, your like, porn like, like puppetry of the puppetry of the penis like they i think they played like carnegie hall like you know really? like, oh yeah no they were like a a kind of like a sideshow oh, I, yeah. oh that's silly no, yeah, I don't. Anyway, uh, and no, all right. So uh, the the porn, um, yeah, I, you know, porn for many people, uh, I am included, was you know, it's kind of a sacred thing. Like you know, you you start jerking off to internet porn, you know, if you are a man of a certain age, uh, when you're very young, it's your first sexual experience by and large, or among your first. Uh, it is something for which is, uh, for men, at least my male friends, was uh, a kind of trust, like an element of trust that it's like, okay, well, if you're really good friends, you know, with, with your friends, you can like talk about what porn you jerk off to, right? Yeah. Or like understand each other's sexual proclivities, like, you know, because 
internet porn is just a thing, right? Between it being a joke or it being uh, something that you would use as like a level of like trust verification. So I have never felt like it's something that I necessarily need to kind of get out on Front Street with you any more than if, you know, like the fact that I order the same thing at Italian restaurants or that I always get the same sandwich at Subway. It's just some shit I've always done that I don't feel is wrong. And and so that was just what it is. And like we've had conversations probably nibbling around the plate, you know, about porn and stuff like that. And also like I've kind of, you know, I don't know, it's kind of blocked by the snowman head, but like there's definitely been like albums for which have like charted on Billboard that have revolved around like yeah. discussions of internet pornography and stuff like that. And Well, and again, like it's not that like I I feel at all that there's anything wrong with porn. Like I said, very, very pro porn. But it, it was just so weird considering that you and I had never really talked about it directly. And yes, like it's a very private personal thing to a certain degree. Well, you know, but like I, that, I don't... that's what made it weird. And again, feeling like I was in a place maybe I shouldn't be. Or... Sure. I guess it wasn't necessarily like it's um, like it's private. Because, again, I talk about it publicly, like, a lot, right? And that site specifically, uh, which, I mean, I guess I should probably shout them out. It was, it was, uh, I forget. I mean, the, I bought the subscription. I guess it's, like, because a lot of these things you kind of get in. They all have their own little, like, mini fetish sort of, like, elements that are very specific. Uh, but they're all part of, like, these larger umbrellas. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was Nubiles Dash Casting. Oh. And so the idea is. Oh, I just went to 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 Nubiles dot net. Yeah. Well, no, that's the umbrella. Oh, okay. Right. Like Nubiles Dash Casting was what I I initially wanted to buy the subscription for. Yeah. Here's the idea. Right. Is you got these ladies. And uh -huh. they're casting other ladies for other porn. But meanwhile, like, they usually start fooling around. And then a guy comes in. And then it's kind of like an Insta three-way. Okay, so here's my experience with porn. Sure. Which is very, very different from yours. <laughs> yeah. So the only time that I've ever watched porn at yeah. all, it's been with great hilarity. And like sure. great storylines, and I think I mentioned this to you when when we were kind of we had talking about this. And, like, and real, uh, real quick, sorry, and, and we'll, we'll we'll get right back to that. Uh, I paid for this, and I think I mentioned it before because there was an element in my life where I was just like, "Hey, you want to know what? I can, I can do it. Look at me. I've made it in life enough that I can pay for this pornography." And you want to know what? I feel gosh darn good about it. <laughs> And and that was something that that I did I did feel I did feel good about. But other than that, yeah, no, it's just porn MD and Pornhub and stuff like that. Oh my god, get it out on the free tip. See, and I never like just freestyle searched for porn. Like it was always yeah. with uh, guy friends of all things. Like not even guys that I was <laughs> dating. Like guys that I just knew. And so it's the storylines that get me. And I know that not all porn has storylines, but that this is the stuff that I watch. It became yeah. kind of like, well, this it is my used default to. what porn is. So, it always used to. So the the one story that sticks to my mind, aside from like the overacting in porn and so much of it just being unrealistic bullshit in regards to sexual expectations, and not all porn is, but there's a lot of bad shit. Um was this storyline where it was like this couple and I think they're like might have briefly been a therapist uh, or somebody like when they're trying to get pregnant and so they go walk off and they're like we're gonna go have sex and get pregnant and so they do like you know whatever not even like weird funny stuff that makes me laugh because a lot of the stuff I've seen I just found probably hilarious uh, it just like ended with him jizzing on her face because yeah. that's As how you make a baby does. yeah and I just, I, I don't, I don't get it. Well, that's, I mean, 
Yeah. It's, Usually it just makes me laugh. And then I feel really bad because somebody's probably jerking off to that and they probably get mad that I laughed at it. I don't think anybody would really get mad. I mean, certainly. I mean, like, obviously when you get into the, the, the uh, intricacies of uh, you know sexual gratification and what that means to one's identity and stuff like that, things often get a little dicey. So I can understand where you would uh, have a sensitivity to it. But I definitely, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't feel... Like, I don't really care what other people think about porn. I, I know what I like about it, and I know what I don't like about it, and, and that's just kind of what it is. Uh, but, yeah, no, all porn kind of used to always have a story. And then uh, in the late 90s, early aughts, as Internet porn kind of got big uh, and the budgets for making it kind of got smaller, you had what they called gonzo porn. And this is not Gonzo. Not the blue guy with no, the nose? No, not the Muppets Gonzo. A <laughs> very different Gonzo? Gonzo? No, that would make a really in, interesting porn. Gonzo as in like Gonzo journalism, like the Hunter S. Thompson, which was always kind of first person perspective in media res, kind of like a slice of life sort of element. And so that's where a lot of like the sites that are out there now are very... Uh, they're all kind of premise driven, not story driven, but it's like like the one that I subscribe to. We're casting women to be in porn and then fucking happens. There's others that are slightly more uh, out there, like the bang bus. What's the bang bus? So Do the I bang need to bus, ask? Uh, no, but it, we did talk about it on Night Attack 3. Thank you for listening. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I listened to it <laughs> once. <laughs> I'm sure I was putting like earplugs in when you were trying to record it. Sure, sure. So the bang bus is a not a bus; it's a van. Uh, B, it uh, purports Does it have to drive carpeting? around. Mm, there are many buses, many okay. many bang buses. I don't know how many have shag carpeting, but I, I, I At think least a one few. or two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, they drive up and they find a random lady. And they're like, hey, do you want a ride somewhere? And of course, because ladies need rides, they get in. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, hey, by the way, we'll give you like 50 bucks if you blow this guy. And she's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. He's like, well, how about 100? And then she blows him. And then it's like, hey, it'll be 500 if you have sex with him. She's like, okay, well, I'm already blowing him on camera. So then 500. And then it always ends in a very mean way. Right. It's very mean. Lady gets out of the car and uh, they're like handing her her money from outside, you know, the, it, you know, outside the, the bang bus. And then they pull it back like Lucy yanking the football out from Charlie Brown. Oh, that's And they so drive mean. off and, and laugh and laugh about it. That's why you get paid first. Well, I mean, I mean, that's what happens when I'm on the bank bus. They do like, get paid because they're actresses and uh, these well, are roles, right? But that's mean in the video. It is, yes, no. And there's a lot of mean-spirited stuff that, that exists in I porn. would have ranted about it on my feminist blog. <laughs> exactly. So uh, so anyway, so that's that's a little, uh, a little tour through porn history. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, is there anything that we want to ask the, 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 the listeners about specifically? I guess maybe about porn and their relationships. Like, is that something that you talk about with your partner? Because, you know, we were, we were talking about this before, you know, I think I know everything about you. Yeah. <laughs> Having lived with you a couple of years and was just... Again, not that this wasn't something that I knew. Sure. It was something that we never communicated, like, so let's, point blank. Let, yeah, let, let, let's, let's widen it out a little bit and just say, like, has there been a moment in which you discovered something, the little discoveries in life with your partner, someone you've been with for a while, and either re the relationship you're in now or a relationship that you were in in the past where you thought you knew everything, and it wasn't necessarily the end of the world. It wasn't necessarily something bad. It was certainly surprising. Mm -hmm. The surprising elements of discovery during a relationship. Go ahead and send us in justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. That is justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. But J U R Y M O R E in the subject line. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and get 
to our feedback. Uh, again, same email address, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com, J-U-R-Y-M-O-R-E in the subject line. My mom wrote in. Can we first apologize to her for this episode? Uh, no. She, listen, she knows what she got into. She raised me. This is all really right. all her fault. All right. Hi, Justin and Ash. Just listened to your sex tips episode and loved it. First of all, I'm so relieved you guys are not having sex yet. I'm proud of both of you. Beyond that great show, very funny. Love you both, Mom. And at some point, she put in a, an emoji with sunglasses. That's very nice. Oh, she's adorbs. Cappy wrote, Jury and Ashley, thanks for discussing my questions. You hit the nail on the head. This was the guy uh, in Central Florida who's dating the girl about an hour and a half away oh, with the birds. The lo- oh, I love birds. We Oh, we love birds in this house. Uh, thank you for discussing my questions. You hit the nails on the head for the most part. I'm probably even less religious than Ashley's ex. I haven't been to church in several years, and to be honest, I question my religion. I don't see a problem uh, there, but I was curious about that dynamic. Justin, I love your car analogy. My car is scheduled to be repaired this week. The hardest part, really, is our work schedules, and hopefully that will be resolved soon, too. And no, Jacksonville is not in the equation, but you did say both cities, Tampa and Orlando, well, close to Orlando. Since my last email, my car no longer drives at all. I'm lucky I live close enough to bike to work. Uh, and then he sent some bird pics. So thank you so, so much you to Cappy. You didn't forward me the bird pics. I'll picks. forward you the okay, bird pics. Okay, good. All right. um, and by the way, Tampa to Orlando, come on, man. You can do that. Mm-hmm. That ain't, that's like an hour and a half. Richard writes, to get it out of the way, big fan of your guys' work. I've been a watcher of everything since NSFW started and through your solo podcast and the wedding podcast experiment. Keep up the great work. My wife also struggles with a very similar flavor of stress and anxiety to what Ashley described in her episode. One of the things I've found that helps a lot is getting her to describe the way she feels so we can distill it down uh, right in her head in the moment. She actually talks herself, quote, down off the ledge most times. My wife and I are also very out-of-the-closet atheist. While she is a very emotional, passionate person, the logic is strong with her. It doesn't take long for her to see the, the path and get on board with me finding solutions while we encounter problems big or small. It also does help that I work in enterprise IT and that I'm a fixer by nature, so I tend to be quick in knocking down problems down to their core and presenting it to her in a way that makes it seem more appropriate. Basic troubleshooting theory, really. Uh, and if you work on your issue and keep, uh, it has kept us happily married for going on nine years. Yay. Uh, I'm, I am with you and Ashley, or, sorry, I wish you and Ashley the best and hope to hear more great stories from the two of you for years to come, Richard. Thank you so much, Richard, for writing in. I think, you know, the one thing, and I think he, he makes a very, very good point, but I, I would, I, I do stick to my guns that it's different strokes for different folks with the anxiety stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know, her, her, his wife might really want somebody to coldly kind of explain the logic of situations, but I know for us, sometimes that just makes the problem worse, you know? Because like, it's not logical. Like Exactly. So it's, I mean, so, sometimes it works, but. I mean, I think. A, 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 a very warm statement of the facts, maybe, uh, but not hammering it in. Not like, but uh, let me remind you that two minutes ago you said something different. Like, mm-hmm. that I think can oftentimes be a problem. Yeah. One last one. It's from Matthew, uh, but it's spelled the French way. So we'll That's say. That's our, our Afghan Canadian. Oh, really? So Actually, Mateau. Canadian Afghan. What? Matteau? Matt? IDK. Matthew? Matthew? Matt, uh, He'll correct a few me later. podcasts before you talked about what lies people say. White lies. White lies. Why do they gots to be white? Uh, and I remember when I was younger and the amount of white lies I would tell, uh, they were mostly to get away with something because I either did something wrong or didn't know the answer. Probably one of the biggest lies uh, I said was a lie of omission. This happened when an ex talked about a topic and then said if she really didn't like it and wouldn't have to reconsider the relationship if she ever found out a boyfriend did that. And since I knew that I had done what she mentioned but didn't ask directly, I didn't say anything about it. But I still think that even though it's not an out-and-out lie, uh, I still think it was wrong of me not to say anything about it. Thanks for doing a podcast. I'm really enjoying it. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, I think well, the live emission can be... Just tell us what you did, because otherwise it's yeah. just a lot of, like, very vanilla. Also, they're not together anymore, so maybe <laughs> yeah. maybe she found out. 
I mean, yeah. like, I don't know. Because also, if it's something Was like, it watching porn? Is that what be. it is? Yeah, it actually like sounds... Never... If I were just to replace all the general, like, this, that's, you know, with porn, it, it sounds like a, a, a typical kind of argument that I've heard people have. Um, have... Go ahead. Oh, it, it, was, it was getting back on the porn topic. Go ahead. Um, Get back to the porn. Is... Have you ever had, like, or dated somebody that, like, had a big issue with it? No. But I think that... Oh, but you're from, like, South Florida where everyone does porn. We know ex-porn people. All right, let's not... All right. Yes, we do. (laughs) uh, South Florida. Uh, We... So, no, I mean, I've never really had somebody that's had an issue with it. But then again, I can't imagine somebody getting into dating me and all the nonsense that comes along with dating me and then being like, no, but you want to know what? This porn thing is something I'm sticking to my guns on. It's like, sure, you curse like a sailor and you can barely dress yourself. And you, know, <laughs> and you, you sound refuse, a little racist sometimes. You refuse to get a real job. Like, you know, uh, you hang around magicians and, you know, bloggers and... Uh, you decide to just, you know, make comedy fodder out of your personal life. Uh, like, yeah, no, you want to know what? This porn thing is really where I'm going to draw my that's toe in the a, sand. That's a good point. Good but point. You win. It has been something that, like, I've watched porn with exes before. Mm-hmm. That's been a thing. Have it has been porn? a sexual aid. Have I made porn? Well... I feel like that line now is kind of blurrier than it really ever has been. Yeah. Well, because, like, what is porn? If porn's just naked pictures of of yourself, then I think everybody's made porn. Video. Have, have, you ever, have I recorded sex? No. Mm. And not necessarily, A, I don't know really what I would get out of it. Like, I, I don't know if it's like, oh, shit, I'm going to jerk off to me fucking. Because, like... Yeah, that'd be like me recording myself playing guitar and like listening it, listening back like, oh, yeah, look at me. I'm playing guitar. It's like, yeah, no, I can just probably watch a professional do it and have a good, have a better time. I've actually recorded porn. Really? Once. They were recording me. Uh-huh. And it was back when people had tapes and the evidence was quickly destroyed. Really? Yep. On like a, like a, a, a handy cam? Yeah, like a handheld camera. Like looking down. Folks, never let it be said that on the Jury More podcast, we do not give you every nook and cranny of our existence. If you would mm-hmm. like to uh, email the show again, Justin Robert Young at gmail.com, J U R Y M O R E in the subject line, Ashley, what do you have to tell the people? I love you. No, you have anything to plug? No, oh, you said, what did I have to tell? Yeah. The truth is I love you guys. A uh, healthy addict pretty much everywhere. Um, Spice Vegan on YouTube. Fake Gamer Girl on Twitch. Mm-hmm. And here on DiamondClub.tv for the jury more. Hell yeah. Oh, and Only Human now. Only, only Human. Only Human with uh, John, John T. T. Diddy. Mr. T. Uh, I'm Justin Robert Young. Justin R. Young on Twitter and every other platform that you could possibly imagine telling you. You're all our friends. Yay. Stay married. Or not. Or not. Whatever. Or just, you know, be single. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Yay! Oh go team! Go, go, go team! Go team! Go to sleep team! We are gonna pass out pretty quickly, you guys. Um. Yeah, between this and Jury's interview with Doxy, it's been a porn week. I actually haven't listened to that yet. I need to. I listen to Jury live most of the time. But I haven't, because that wasn't live, I didn't see it slash hear it. 
you know what? Uh, if you wanted to have lied about the porn, you could have, and I had not seen the subscription thing, or maybe even if I did see the subscription thing, you could have been like, oh no, I was just doing research for Doxy. I'm like, oh, he was checking out Doxy naked before. Uh, see, that would be fucked up to me. That would be fucked up. Like, and I would have been I, I really would, pissed if I found out. I but would be, um, I, mean, I, I would be very ashamed about that. Yes. As you should be. <laughs> um, though I would have, I would have believed that, I think. Ugh. I will. I will listen to a time jumper. It's just been crazy, crazy week trying to get shit together. And now get back to, like, actually planning the wedding. Yes, he is a journalist. And a porn connoisseur. I'm a connoisseur. <laughs> Only the finest. Oh, no, I've jerked off of some really... You have? Okay. Really terrible porn. I don't think I've ever jerked off to porn. Who's calling you? Calling JJ Stone. Oh. Well, he can be on the air. Uh, hey man, do you want to be on the air talking about this? <laughs> Yeah. All right, hold on, wait a minute. You're actually. Hold on. <laughs> Feel like we're gonna get schooled, or you're gonna get schooled by Owen. Uh, all right, uh, Owen, Say... go ahead. Oh, I don't hear him. Hold on. You need to turn the volume. Owen, can you hear us? Yep, I hear you. Oh. Is it not going into the board? Uh, alright. Here, hear me. Here, yeah. I can hold by the yeah, mic. Hold okay. Caller, you're on the air. Hey! Hey! I'm not schooling anybody. Okay, not this time. So, so, so two things. One, I make tons of corners all the time, just for evidence of myself. You know, being a big guy like myself, I gotta remind myself back when I'm like 90, like I used to get down. Uh -huh. So I record all my exploits at least once. Uh, but a general porn story, like, because Justin was talking about, guys, share porn, talk about porn. I never did that except for one time. Where I'm playing basketball, there's, like, eight guys, and I watched this porn, it was called The Sexorcist. The Sexorcist? And long story short of this girl, she was a beast. Like, she was growling at the guy. Her eyes were literally, like, bloodshot red. Like, she was, like, tearing this guy apart. Like, she was going down on him. Like, it hurt to watch her, like. She was riding them and you thought your stomach was going to break. It was just so aggressive. So I was telling my brother, I like, you got to watch this porn. Like, I'm not the type of guy to make other guys watch porn, but like, you got to watch this porn. So we're all huddled up with my computer. <laughs> it's like eight of us in the living room. <laughs> and we're watching. And my roommate walks in with this chick. First time I went on a date with her. It's like a date, date, date where I tell a picnic or some bullshit. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, ah, oh, nothing, nothing. She's like, well, something's going on here. You got to huddle around the computer. And I'm like... I was like, I was watching this porn, it's called The Sexist, and I was showing everybody because it's crazy, the girl's crazy, it's funny. And she's like, oh, well, put it on. And I'm like, I'm not putting it on for you. Like, you seem like a nice girl. I just met you, <laughs> this is the first date. I'm not putting it on. And everybody's like, yeah, you probably don't want to see it. She's like, well, no, I gotta see it, right? You can't just tell me a Sexist did not see it. So we turn it on, and the whole room, before we were like, ooh, ah, like, oh my God, like, just making noises. Well, when she's sitting there, it's dead silent. And we watched the whole 30-minute clip. Oh, my God. And it ends. It ends. <laughs> she looks through. She's like, wow, that girl's aggressive. Come on, Steph. It's such a girl. And she leaves with my ring ring. <laughs> so <laughs> back half hour later, like, we got in the car. She started crying. <laughs> oh, my God. And she made him take her home. And he never talked to her. I, I almost want to see that porn now. I want to know what sent her that. crying. <sighs> I, I'll see. I, I'll see if I still have it. Cause I, I, in, in college, I used to sell porn on DVDs. Um, oh my god! I put five gigs of porn on, so I'd have like 120 movies on a DVD disc, and we sell for ten dollars a pop. So I had tons of porn. But when I came across that one, I was like, Oh my god! Like it was. It, like I said, it, it, every guy to watch you, it's like I can't. I could never deal with a woman like this. Like she was so scary. It was so intense, and it's just like. He told me, he's like, yeah, but she, I got in the car, I shut the door, I got in, she was just crying. <laughs> I'm like, I told her, you didn't want to see it. 
Oh, you my know? God. So, uh, I've never watched porn or shared porn with men before. That. <laughs> Except you know, for that guys, one. Guys do that. Yeah, well, guys do dumb stuff. Like, well, they'll email you porn, and then you open it, and it's like porn. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? It's not a YouTube video. You can't send it to me like a music video. You gotta <laughs> put it in the email or the text message, hey, this is porn. You know, because sometimes you just click a link, and you don't even look at it to see what it is. <laughs> You're at work, your boss is uh, over your shoulder. Yeah. Or yeah. you're with a girl, you know, like, <laughs> uh, and, and to your statement earlier, like, if I share porn with a girl, I got to do it early in a relationship. Like, or just dating, and you're like, oh, I saw this crazy thing, you want to watch that? Once you're deep in a relationship, you might get that person like, well, why we got to watch porn or something wrong, we need to be watching porn. But if you introduce it earlier, that's not a big deal. Yeah. Oh, that that is one crazy story, though. <laughs> crazy story well get your butt to bed yeah yeah uh, we need to go sleep justin had like two hours of sleep last night or something crazy so but thanks well, thanks for calling long. in uh i'm definitely gonna go start yeah. looking for the sexorcist though I, I i will i will look for it in my leisurely well, time for you and just well, don't hate me if i find it oh no i won't i'm dying to see this now comb through the archives <laughs> all right good talking right. to you yeah, Owen. Good night. bye Man, have you guys seen that? Totally haven't seen that. Well, uh, we are going to shut it down, I think, so we can go to sleep. 